Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. What is going on, brothers and sisters? It is Daniel here. We're back here again today, alhamdulillah. Today we have a video going to be looking at this human shields claim that we see all too often here. People arguing on the side of Israel. You know, when you bring up this, when you bring up the reality of, of all of these innocent Palestinian people and children dying in these horrible conditions, you'll see mostly one of two excuses. You'll either hear, well, but October 7th, or you'll hear human shields. Okay, so, you know, without going into either of those too deeply, if you can, if you can negate or disprove either of these two or both, the people arguing on the side of Israel really don't have anything to stand on. There's no reason to be killing all these Palestinian people. In my opinion, even if the October 7th um, and the human shields uh, things were, were even a valid argument, still the, you shouldn't be killing innocent people. However, it would be especially um, idiotic, especially cruel for Israel to be killing these innocent Palestinian people if October 7th and this human shields claim are proven to be wrong. So recently I've, I've learned some new interesting information about the October 7th ordeal, but this video in particular is going to be more talking about this human shields claim. This I don't know too much about. I was just having a conversation earlier uh, with a guy I know from the UK and he was, you know, he brought up this, well, but he, tunnels and they're hiding and under hospitals and schools and stuff. And I really didn't know what to say back, um, you know, other than they, they should fight man to man. And so hopefully in this video, I can learn more about this. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really curious to see uh, this video is supposedly debunking the Israeli human shields claim. So let's get into it and see what we can learn today. Israel has killed more than 10,000 people in Gaza, 4,000 of them children. They bombed schools, they bombed ambulances, and they bombed hospitals. But when challenged on this, they always have one answer. We're allowed to do it because Hamas uses human shields. This was Israeli government spokesman Elon Levy speaking to Sky News. The fighting in northern Gaza is going to get dangerous. It's going to get dangerous because Hamas has literally embedded itself under people's homes, under schools, underneath hospitals. And those are all legitimate targets under international law. When Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says the UK wants Israel to win, it wants us to go after these terror targets so they can never perpetrate the massacre again. There and we hope indeed, that civilians only, will continue heeding our warnings. My understanding of international law is that they are only... Um, targets that you can aim at as long as civilians are not in the path of those missiles and rockets. No, that that is, so it's important that we're on the same page about international law. And I know that's very important uh, for British, uh, import, very important for British audiences, especially. Okay. International law says that medical units may not be used under any circumstances to shield military targets. The fact that Hamas has its military headquarters in the basement of the Shifa hospital is a war crime, period. Now, that argument about so-called human shields has travelled far and wide. The Washington Post ran this grim cartoon this week. It shows a caricature of a Hamas leader with children, a baby, a woman strapped to his body. And it has the Hamas leader saying, how dare Israel attack civilians? Now, I cannot think of anything more dehumanising. There are entire families dying right now and you have this sick caricature, right? It's, it's, it's disgusting. This is a super common sentiment as well. Amongst, especially Westerners, I think this is how they see the current situation right now. They see these Hamas uh, terrorists that are hiding under hospitals and hiding in schools. And that's, uh, that's why Israel is bombing these hospitals and bombing these schools. So it's kind of like this necessary evil almost is how the West sees what's happening. So I'm, like I said, I'm really interested to see how they kind of dissect this. The human shield argument isn't just being deployed, though, by Israeli spokespeople or racist cartoonists. Politicians, supposedly of the centre-left, are getting in on the act. Here's Shadow Health Secretary Wes Streeting on Newsnight. From what you are seeing, is it carrying out that operation within international law? Well, I, I'm deeply disturbed by the scale of civilian casualties, particularly the number of children and the stark warning from the United Nations we've seen today. 
I acknowledge that for Israel, this is fiendishly difficult because you've got Hamas that embeds itself in civilian populations, uses buildings like schools and hospitals as bunkers to hide within. That's really difficult. Is it within an international law? Um, I, I, I would urge Israel, the Labour Party would urge Israel to remain within international law. When I'm you see, you, is it? Well, uh, from what you answer think, the question, think, dude. To be honest, uh, we're going to have to see as the uh, facts emerge. Uh, 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 the UN says it's breaking international law. Amnesty says it's breaking international law. The Red Cross says it's breaking international law. Well, and Israel needs to act within international law. But and, and any, yeah, there any are organizations saying it's already breaking it. Accusations where Israel is accused of breaking international law need to be properly investigated. Uh, and I think particularly when it comes to accusations, for example, of the use of white phosphorus, that is prohibited under international law. When it comes to specific targets, schools, hospitals, they are protected under international law. The complication in international law comes in when Hamas are using those buildings as facilities to okay. launch attacks. Now, that was the Shadow Health Secretary arguing in favour of bombing hospitals. Now, it's also important to note, right, he said there, any any um, suspected war crime has to be properly investigated. Then he just completely repeated um, IDF Israeli propaganda that they have uh, Hamas militants in bunkers in hospitals. Now, I don't know either way, but we haven't seen any evidence for that. Yet, where Streeting seems very, very happy to repeat it on Newsnight if it's Israeli propaganda. But when it comes to the use of white phosphorus, oh, suddenly it needs to be investigated by some independent arbiter. So when it's an Israeli claim, oh, yeah, I'll just repeat that. Yeah, 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 yeah. they're using all these hospitals as bunkers. Where's the evidence, where Streeting? Yeah, suddenly has this really high standard. I mean, if you, if, you are, if you are innocent people uh, <laughs> because of this claim that Hamas is hiding under hospitals and hiding under schools, you would think that you would have to have some kind of evidence for this. You would think so, right? <laughs> and so their inability to, to provide that is alarming, to say the least. To play devil's advocate, though, I think it is an interesting uh, point. You know, if Hamas is breaking interna from an international law perspective, right? If Hamas is breaking the international law by hiding in schools and hiding under hospitals or in hospitals, whatever. And that is a, that is breaking of, inter, that's already breaking international law. What is uh, allowed then uh, from Israel's uh, point of view, is Israel allowed to attack them? If they're breaking international law by doing that, does it matter if Israel breaks international law to attack them? I don't know. From an international law standpoint, how, how, how would that hold up? Of, of, of evidence when it comes to white phosphorus. I think it's, it's pretty disgusting. Um, we are going to talk you through, though, the reality behind um, this argument about human shields. Um, it is a category that exists under international humanitarian law, and it is illegal to use people as human. Did you just say humanitarian? And shields. Now, it's also the case that the side using human shields does share some blame if civilians die when an opponent, when an opponent bombs a legitimate target. All right, so th this is a concept that exists in law. It's not completely um, bogus. That wouldn't, however, give Israel can't blanche. Now, any attack okay. still needs to be proportionate. Even if human shields are used, okay. it still needs to be proportionate. And killing 80 people at a refugee camp to get at one Hamas commander, as Israel have done, doesn't sound like it meets that yeah. threshold. Right, so you can't say, oh, they were all human shields. If you're killing 80 people, I think the majority of them were women and children, you can't say, oh, they were human shields, so it's fine. No, it has to be proportionate. Now, the other mm. question Makes is whether sense. Hamas actually uses human shield, shields. Do its actions meet the threshold of using human shields? Now, we can start here with this definition from the International Committee of the Red Cross's Humanitarian Law Database. So they say, the use of human shields requires an intentional co-location of military objectives and civilians or persons hors de combat with the specific intent of trying to prevent the targeting of those military objectives. So you have two things here. First, there has to be the intention to put civilians and military objectives in the same place. So civilian and military sort of infrastructure in the same place or people. And second, when putting them in the same place, it has to be for the specific reason of preventing that military target from being attacked. Now, that means that simply having civilian infrastructure near to military targets doesn't meet the threshold. Of course, to use the previous mm -hmm. example, a target sure. being in a refugee camp doesn't make the refugees human shields unless the target is there specifically to use those refugees as wow. human shields. And given Gaza very is interesting a very point. densely populated place, which is being... That's a very interesting point. That's very important. ...bombed left, right, and center. It's not implausible 
that civilians and military personnel might just sometimes happen to be right. in the same place. Israel's argument gets even weaker if we look at the damage wow. done to Gaza as a whole. So according to the UN, a third of all buildings in northern Gaza have been destroyed or damaged by Israeli bombardment. Now you have to ask, does Israel really think that one in every three buildings is a center of Hamas operations placed specifically there to avoid right. being bombed? They're using all of those buildings, all of those civilians in them as human shields. Even if they were, does Israel mm. really have persuasive evidence that one in every three buildings mm -hmm. is shielding a military target so impressive, so powerful, that it justifies the destruction of countless civilian infrastructure and lives? So no way. Blocks of flats. The reason 10,000 people have died so far in Gaza is because they are bombing all of these civilian infrastructure. Blocks of flats, schools, hospitals, everything is getting bombed, right? And if they can't show that they were specifically using those civilians as as um, human shields and that it was proportionate, then it's a war crime, right? Maybe West Street team should look this stuff up. We can also look at specific claims that Israel has made about particular buildings. To give one example, the IDF published this video earlier this week. Look at this picture. What do you see? At first glance, you might think this is a school or a hospital, but Hamas sees this as a legitimate place to store weapons such as rockets. Now, in that clip, you saw this. The IDF says that this opening here is a tunnel used by Hamas to store weapons located in the grounds of the Qatari hospital in Gaza City. The video is clearly being used to justify a possible future attack on the hospital or, or other hospitals, for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, there is, however, no evidence. The image shows what Israel says it does. And an Al Jazeera digital investigation has now cast doubt on Israel's claims. Enter Al Jazeera's digital investigations team, Sanad. It decided to take a closer look at the video behind this latest Israeli allegation. It started by identifying features surrounding this opening and cross-referencing those features with satellite images to determine its exact location. The team also uncovered footage filmed during the construction of the hospital published eight years ago. Wow, One nice work. Reveals the construction of an underground, isolated, and enclosed structure in the exact location mm -hmm. of That's the it. opening in question. The video makes plain that the construction Israel alleges to be a Hamas tunnel took place while the hospital complex was being built. According to the images in this archival video, this structure is not only not connected to the <laughs> underground tunnel system. Wow. But after further analysis, our digital investigations team found that this structure is nothing more mm. than a water reservoir. To further verify its finding, the team tracked down one of the original engineers who worked on the construction wow. of the Qatari hospital. By cross-referencing his diagram, with the images in the video yeah, released by the Israeli army, our digital investigations team was able to clearly identify a pressure yeah. equalization pipe commonly used for water and fuel tanks or reservoirs. So, and this is kind of drives the point home. I've I, I've heard this, and and since thinking about it, it's I think it's true. Israel it seems to be emotional and rushed. This whole operation, they, they, they're they not thinking, they're just acting. And this, you know, I, I used to be a boxer and this is the number one thing you don't want to do in a fight. You don't want to get in that state where you're like on tilt. You're not th you're thinking logically, you're thinking emotionally and you just start making really stupid decisions. It will cost you a fight, it will get you knocked out. You don't want to do that. I think that's what Israel is doing. They're not thinking, they're just acting like a savage monkey. Its conclusion, the only thing this video confirms is that there is a water tank on the property, not a tunnel used by Hamas fighters. 
Now, as you might guess, I'm not an expert on, on water tanks and I don't claim to be, um, but that Al Jazeera investigation seems more compelling than the Israeli one, than the Israeli justification. We've seen, we've seen this square and therefore it must be a Hamas tunnel. Agreed. Now, that seems especially unconvincing to me as Hamas tunnels aren't known to just have clear openings next to public buildings, right? They, they are military infrastructure. They aren't supposed to be easy to find. Mm -hmm. um, Rivka, what do you make of this argument about human shields? It's being deployed by everyone. You saw there where's streeting. Um, it's, it's, it's the main right-wing talking point, actually. Oh, they've killed 10,000 people. Well, that's not Israel's fault. That's Hamas's fault because they're using them as human shields. What are Israel supposed yeah. to do if there are civilians in the way of their targets? They've got to kill the civilians. Yeah, it's being used because it's a brilliant loophole for the, uh, you know, for following international law. Well, we couldn't because these were human shields. I think what's incredible to me is how the international community doesn't consider that the burden of proof is on Israel, right. who's making these allegations rather than, um, you know, Hamas or Israel. Uh, independent media outlets such as Al Jazeera to disprove them. You know, Israel, which has one of the most advanced militaries in the world, which is famed for its intelligence capabilities, although mm -hmm. they obviously failed spectacularly on the 7th of October, you know, famed so much that its alumni of its uh, intelligence organizations go on to found the NSO group and Black Cube and become mercenaries for state and non-state actors around the world. Incredible to me that this advanced Israeli military and intelligence operation isn't capable of providing any compelling evidence that Hamas are in fact using human shields. But an Al Jazeera investigation, yep. which... All they show is like tunnels and it's like a uh, big whoop. There's tunnels. Okay. A tunnel... <laughs> Using tunnels is not a war crime. Yeah, and Al, Al Jazeera, which has vastly, uh, infinitesimally smaller, uh, you know, amount of resources than the Israeli state, can produce compelling evidence that Hamas isn't using mm. these sites um, wow. to, to sort of as bunkers, and therefore the people occupying these buildings as human shields. It's incredible to me that nobody nobody makes that argument. Where is the evidence? You have no. one of the best funded militaries in the world. Where are the receipts? Mm. But I think you know what's what's also She's really on important it, here, and it reminds me of, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago with the massive discussion around whether or not uh, Israel bombed al Ahli Hospital. Now, I, I I do believe it is important uh, for the media to report accurately on this. I do believe it's important to get to the bottom of who bombed the hospital. But what we've seen since is that Israel has indiscriminately bombed that and other hospitals. Yeah. Israel is telling <laughs> us repeatedly that it Nuts, does man. not have any concern for civilian life in Palestine, in Gaza, or in the West Bank, and it hasn't for 75 years. You know, we've seen Preach. Um, Israel bombing Preach, roads sister. that it's encouraged Palestinians to flee across. We We've seen Israel uh, bombing ambulances that people are trying to mm. seek medical treatment in. We've seen white phosphorus being dropped. Now, the reason that white phosphorus has become indisputable as an accusation is because you can see it falling from the sky. <laughs> and so Israel has no, has no way to defend itself against that allegation. So it's just given up on doing that. I don't see why more isn't being made of that. And, you know, the, do people realize the kind of effects that white phosphorus has? It literally burns your skin right off of your body. So, you know, regardless... It's almost sort of like secondary to me, the question of whether or not Israel is using um, Palestinians as human shields in uh, specific situations such as hospitals or schools, because we know that it has no concern for Palestinian life in every other thing that it does. It's been shooting people indiscriminately in the West Bank. It's been taking hostages, such mm. as the uh, activist um, uh, Ahed Tamimi and her father, who's now in administrative detention for six months, which could be extended up to a year. You know, these are all very normal, quotidian parts of Israeli apartheid that pre-existed and predated the 7th of October mm. and have been accelerating since then. And, and, and proving to us day after day, uh, rhetorically, militarily, um, diplomatically, that Israel doesn't care about human life. So why are we allowing ourselves to become so preoccupied with the question of whether or not Israel is uh, innocent because Hamas is using, under this particular definition of international law, human shields, a charge which it has presented no credible evidence for, and of which there can be no credible evidence produced by, you know, 
actors outside of Israel because no one has the, the resources. You know, Al Jazeera can't be expected to go and disprove every single claim um, of, uh, of of human shields that, that Israel is making. It mm-hmm. simply doesn't have the resources to do that. I think we should also fundamentally question what the logic of human shields, uh, be, besides being a sort of... Um, uh, a loophole in international law that kind of allows, that lets Israel off the hook, what that suggests about Palestinians. It suggests that Palestinians are not human beings, but human shields. It dehumanizes Palestinians and renders them simply these kind of bargaining chips or yeah. sort of pawns Sacrifice. Um, uh, in, in a conflict, when actually we're just talking about ordinary people who have not who have not asked for this and who are not and who are not waging this war. Uh, so I think like we really need to try and understand why it's been such an effective rhetorical um, and sort of argumentative approach by Israel, because it just feeds into the idea that Palestinians are not human beings to begin with, something yeah. that the West, because of our sort of Israel propaganda saturated media environment is primed to believe. Whereas on the flip side, as we were saying earlier, where if every Palestinian death is a terrorist death, because I Either they are terrorists or they are uh, shielding terrorists. (laughs) Every Israeli death, including the deaths of sergeants and majors and lieutenants and corporals in the in the IDF, is an illegitimate death. Is a uh, tragedy. You know, Adam Mm Schatz in his uh, piece for the London Review of Books, this girl's going off. Operation Al Aqsa Flood described the first phase of that operation as typical guerrilla warfare and targeting legitimate military uh, military targets. But, you know, we're now in a position where every Palestinian is fair game and every Israeli killed is a terrorist attack. Wow. That I want to listen to that last sentence again. You know, we're now in a position where every Palestinian is fair game and every Israeli killed is a terrorist attack. Uh, Wow. She hit the nail on the head with that one. Great. Good video. That's a good video. It, It the Al Jazeera clip about the little water hole, that makes a ton of sense. Like she said, but it's like it's like we're relying on Al Jazeera here to to disprove the IDF, which is one of the most powerful military forces in the world with insane amount of resources. Yet the IDF has the burden of proof. They're the one killing innocent people. They should be they should have to prove that what they're doing is the right thing before they even do it. Yet they just do it. And then, and then they're like, Oh, you know, just kind of dismissive and then do it again. The, their lack of care about innocent Palestinian lives is so evident. And yet the world seems to, uh, agree with them, at least the, the Western world. It seems like, but I do see more and more people daily starting to kind of wake up to this is kind of fishy. The the Israeli um, narrative it, it doesn't really make any sense. There's too many innocent people dying. And this claim of human shields and, oh, but October 7th and what are we supposed to do? What are, We can't do anything else. It just seems like, really? Really, there's nothing else you can do? You got to, I open up social media and I see all these dying kids and you're telling me there's no other option. Come on, man. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. And everyone, everyone's also starting the conversation at at October 7th. That's like so common. I was having a conversation today and it was, it's so ironic too, because they say like, well, what do you expect Israel to do? Like someone came into their house and attacked them. What would you do if someone someone came into your house and attacked you? It's like, no, you don't understand the beginning. Israel is the one in Palestine's house attacking them first. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like if you're it, someone's standing there and attack and stabbing you with a knife. There's two people, right? You're standing there watching these two people. Person one stabs person two with a knife and just keeps stabbing them. And then person two realizes, oh, you know what? I have a, I have a weapon too. And they pull out their weapon and they start hitting, uh, stabbing person one. And everyone goes, wait, 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 person two, you're a terrorist. You can't stab them. What's wrong with you? 
Like, hello? Did you not see what happened? Person one started the whole thing. So this is this is what I, I see happening. And then it's just amazing how the IDF can just perform these atrocities and, you know, seem to be no repercussion. Like, hello. Hello, world. Wake up. Wake up, please. It's not justified. What they're doing is wrong. And it's okay to say that. It's okay to admit that. Tell people, you know. Spread the word, man. May Allah, may Allah make it easy for all these Palestinian people that, you know, are, are struggling and suffering and having this massive injustice being committed on them. May they be free and healthy. And um, thank you for watching this video with me. May Allah bless you generously for doing so. Keep spreading the word out there, brothers and sisters. And inshallah, we will see you all in the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.